Fucking that guy having a sig. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh no! Wow. Jesus. Now oh, they're just spinning that earth cars. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry, Master. D don't teach, please. Shut the fuck up. I run you from Baldy Fair and Square. So whatever I say is the law for you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> law, Master, is law. But don't. No kill, Master, please. No kill, please. Master angry, but still Master. If Master dies, they kill me next. Mm. You to save me. And Master wakes up, won't remember what was. Thank you, Mirza. I remember Mirza all my life. Oh. Thank you, great Mirza. Sorry. The holy flame protect you, Mirza. Ah, oh, right, I see. I didn't realize they said that. You're not supposed to be here. Will you go up the bladder? Oh, you mean the... And you'll end up right at the boss's door. Ew. Oh god, they got the voice clipped from a guy that was supposed to be wearing a helmet, I think. That sounded really dumb. Oh, it's this part in it. Just you fucking look at that. The whore drank Master's water. Go give her a lesson. Forgive me, Uli Mirsa. I You're a dog! Shut the fuck up. Why do you listen? The water is for people! For the map? Do you get it here? What's your fault? Oh, I thought I could knock them out. Oh, yeah. Very stupid. I'm wondering, are they going to shoot me or not? Bloody hell. <laughs> this is so bizarre. No. Oh. I mean, if I die, I die. I was just curious what would happen if I punched that second guy. Wait. <laughs> oh god, what? Oh, that was so stupid! Do you think I'm a fool? You didn't want to see it. Now you will all die! Starting with you, Gyo! Kill them! Otiom, get ready! Ooh! Oh, I hope this doesn't, like, completely fuck me over. Hey, I don't mind. This was. I wasn't expecting it to do that. I got good karma though. Oh god. Yeah, I'm kind of getting fucked up. Hey, I didn't do anything. Divik. There we go. Oh god. Sheesh. Wait.
No. There we go. There we go. Epic. Oh god. I don't really mind that I, you know, messed it up or whatever. I was saving a slave. Oh god. Jesus. Why is it so echoey here? We're like out in the open. We should be fine. Oh. Did she get him? You got it. Hey, I kind of prefer this. Oh yeah. Oh, what do you know? Where are you going, you windbag? Bite the bullet. Oh. That's why I hate this part so much. I should just throw like several Molotovs at once. Uh, it just doesn't take you... It doesn't take long to kill you whatsoever. Especially with the guy with the Gatling gun. Once he's done, or dealt with, the rest of them should be a lot easier to deal with. On the plus side, I managed to do this in a different way. I don't know if that's going to come back and bite me in the arse, but it might. Although I will admit, even if you do get up there peacefully, um, the outcome is the same. You end up having to do this. Because the Baron pulls a gun on you. Hold on. Oh god. Me too. Oh. There we go. Ouch. There we go. That's the guy with the valves. Come on. Got him. Oh god. In the air? Oh wait. You went all out here, didn't you? Just surrender now and give us the trouble of looking for you. You won't fight for long. Oh god. Whoa! Oh, impressive! So this is the plan Gul was talking about. Oh, I got him. I got him. Yes. Oh, my God. That that was only my second try. Thank fucking God. That's awful. Let's give it a shot, Artyom. Awesome. Come on, Artyom. Do it. You wanted to create a new world? Oh. Oh dear. Oh. Oh god. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Artyom, your head's in the way. Brilliant. Hope. I'll 
never forget it. But this war has only started for me, and I must see it to the end. The winning end. Hmm. Where? Uh, let's go, Artyom. Thank you for helping my people. I'm in your debt forever. Oh. I think he came with? You're back, my love. I was so worried. Ah, Oh, yeah, he's with us. Yes. Which means that I'm guaranteed the good ending. Good shit. Oh, thank God. Oh, I'm glad that only took me two tries. On the banks of Summer! Cannibals in the mountain bunker. Slavers on the shores of the dried out sea. How many monsters has the war given rise to? Or perhaps were they always there? And the war simply gave them a chance to show themselves and now we're stuck with them forever. Mm. Regardless, we can't afford to lose hope. We are getting ever closer to our dream. Finding a place where we could live, free from radiation and mutants. The maps we recovered in the desert have provided us with several promising options. And now the crew members are excitedly waiting for the Colonel's decision on where the Aurora should go next. Currently though, the train is calmly rolling eastward. The crew rests, and Stepan proposed to Katya. Hey! Proposal she couldn't refuse. I mean, that was obvious from the very beginning. As soon as they saw each other, Stepan just instantly fell for her. So now it's summer. Because it was spring previously, I think. Whoa! Stands long ago, and it still persists. <clears throat> what does Crest even smoke? <laughs> it's terrible. In any case, I'm better now. What's with music? Guys, but uh, you should come to the mess hall. The table is almost served. Oh no! Thanks, oh. Stepan. How? I'll be there in a moment. Shall we go, Artyom? Or shall we stay a oh my god. It's so nice. <laughs> Should we get another round in? Holy oh, crap. Artyom. That was I've smooth. Jesus. And Katya, you and me. And thinking how lucky we are. It was so different with my parents. It was bad. No, oh, I, I, I wanted to do the drink for myself. Did I ever tell you why my mom died? Would it not be how? I didn't. It was because of Dad. He used to be even harsher back then. He used to come home from the barracks and reach for the bottle while taking off his boots. They'd quarrel, and then he'd stop appearing for a time. And while he was away, she'd start drinking too, and crying when she was sober. She'd feel better, would get kind of dreamy when drunk. You know how she used to call me, just A. She'd hug me and say, one day, A, you and I are going to go to Vladivostok, the city I was born in. And from there to a village on the ocean shore. <laughs> I was five back then and didn't really get much. But I could imagine that village and the ocean so vividly because I believed her. And then she killed herself, drank some kind of poison. Oh, wow. Father quit drinking after mom's death. Did never pay much attention to me, but with her gone, he'd never leave me alone. Took me along everywhere. We only talked about her a couple of times, though. Mm. I used to have this doll, Jana. I played make-believe that she was my daughter, and we went to the ocean together. Then my father hid it, told me it got lost. He probably didn't want me to agonize over mom's dream. Then I imagine she grew up and went to Vladivostok. And now I'm going. Not to Vladivostok, but with you. The 
dream came true. Hmm. By the way, I was always intrigued by what Dad dreams about. He should have some dreams, but what are they? High rank? He could choose any. Saving people? What would the saved do next? Sit underground? I never understood him. What does he hope for in life? What makes him happy? Nothing, perhaps. He never really had any time to think about tomorrow. Down in the metro, those thoughts don't come casually. Here on the surface, though. Hmm. I, for one, have something I want to do. I want to run through the sand barefoot. Build a sand castle for the kids. I'm imagining two. A boy and a girl. The boy would be a copy of you. Go swimming with mountains behind us. Wooden houses on the shore. The sun would wake us up every day, rising from the ocean. That harbor is our destination. Worth going there even if we have half the world to cross. Everyone should have a destination. A point on the map where they aspire to go and where one could finally be happy. All our guys have their own. We broke out of the metro and are now starting to scatter. Not at once, of course. At first, we're all still running together, searching. But eventually, each of us will find a point like this and stay there. Yeah. I don't know where my dad's destination is. I don't know where yours is either. But I know I love you a whole lot. Aww. Can I leave now? Wait, so if I do this, does that... Do I smoke it? Oh, I do. Oh. <sighs> yeah! Come oh, on. Oh! Oh god, did that make more dialogue appear? It... Didn't. Good stuff. Go, Artyom. I'll rest some more and join you later. I'm still impressed by how quickly she managed to put on a top. Clearly we had some fun. Alright. Right, what's the new shite that's in the, in here? Oh, it's changed from 3901 to 5369, I think. Alright, so we have new diary. Yamantau. Oh god, the sun. We are approaching the Yamantau bunker, the final destination of our long journey. Direct radio contact with the bunker has completely dissolved Miller's resentment towards me for destroying our previous lives. He is eagerly anticipating the meeting with the Minister of Defense he was promised. Probably such things are important for a career officer. The people, though, are less interested. They are asking important questions. Where are the occupying forces? Why is there just wilderness? And people gone wild around? What's stopping the government from restoring the country? What was... Oh God. What was being done in the last 20 years? Miller believes that we'll get all the answers. <laughs> Wait. Miller believes we'll get all the answers. Oh, he'll be pardoned. As well as Anna, I, and we all will return home. To the metro. Why would we do that? It seems like life is a lot better here. The Caspian! Oh god. Make kilometers separated us from the Caspian Communication Center, but we had no way of knowing if the map stored there would yield a spot free from radiation, a place where we could finally settle in peace. But what was left for us save for hope? The desert w was taking its toll. The crew suffered from heat and thirst, and the Aurora was not in her top form. Either we were out of coal and had to switch to burning the only available fuel, old cross ties and twigs. Twigs were starting to grow rare, uh, were rare though, and the piles of discarded cross ties were quite often buried in sand. Where the Caspian Sea used to be, desert now stretched. And although the radiation levels remained quite acceptable, no signs of life, save for rare ruins or rusty ship hulks, were to be seen anywhere. Uh, despite that, while passing another completely unremarkable stretch of desert, we noticed a car tailing the Aurora, that quite soon veered into the ruins of a small town. It seemed worth investigating. So I went to check the place out. On my way to the goal, I had to hide from a sandstorm in the ruins of a restaurant where I was attacked by one of the local bandits. I had to knock him out and also took the car, or took his car, rolling out any chance for a warm welcome from his buddies in the future. 
Not like there was any chance of staying on their good side. Anyway, quite soon after obtaining the car, I got a message from the Colonel. He wanted me to help a local lady named Gule fight off some bandits in exchange for information. Why do we keep encountering conflict wherever we go? Gule turned out to be an informal leader of the local resistance movement, or rather, the whole movement. Despite lack of active support from the enslaved locals, she had been fighting against their subjugators for years, having become somewhat of a legend amongst the slaves and their masters alike. The slaves would all but pray to her, the slavers hated and feared her like the devil. No wonder that once they'd finally found her last refuge in an old lighthouse, they besieged it at once. We would, of course, gladly help Duel in her struggle f for the freedom of her people, but first we had to find... the Satellite Communication Center. And that's where... Meeting the lady proved really fortunate as she knew the location of the bunker. Her mother used to work there before the war, and Gyul told us that the center kept functioning for several years after the nuclear, nuclear strike exchange. Compiling the Fallout maps, so go... Wait. After the f nuclear strike exchange, compiling the Fallout maps, so going down there to get them was definitely going to be worth it. I managed to find the maps and deliver them to the base. Decoding the... Wait. Decoding the required time but we had more pressing issues at, at that moment. Most of the crew members were down due to heat and dehydration, and the Aurora didn't have enough fuel and water left to even get moving. The local kingpin, the Baron, had it all, and was not too, but was none too eager to share. Considering our desperate situation and our past experience negotiating with the bandits, the Colonel decided to take what was needed by force, starting with the only fresh water source in the vicinity, where we could steal a full, bow a full Bowser truck. On the way to my objective, I noticed a fortified dwelling in one of the ravines. The locals could have given me more information on the situation, so I decided to pay them a visit. When I arrived, though, I saw a group of bandits trying to pry the occupants out of the dwelling. But at that moment, I just couldn't take the risk. The fates of the Aurora's crew depended on me, and I had to choose between families and strangers. Or family and strangers. At the entrance to the cave... To the cave town, which was the only way to the water spring, I met up with Demir. He seemed to have changed as if he had finally accepted the f his forgotten roots he'd been denying for so long. At first, he felt no connection to the unfortunate subjugated people whom he shared blood with, but that would gradually change with every extra hour he spent in the desert. He was eager to see the cave town, but it proved to be a, disappoint a disappointment. Still, we were able to reach the spring. Of course, I couldn't just be on my way once I found the prison ship. Oh, okay. Where well, the bandits were holding their prisoners methodically beating the will out of them to turn them into obedient slaves. The bandits did guard their cattle, but it looked like they were only concerned with stopping the escape attempts, at least. I didn't have too much trouble freeing the prisoners, and in my eyes, that had instantly made our trip to the godforsaken desert worth it. The bandits were guarding the spring uh, quite well, and to take the truck out, we had to open the gate of the fort they built to protect it. The operation was complicated, by the fact that besides the bandits, the fort housed quite a few of their slaves. Luckily, we were able to succeed without excessive bloodshed. While Demir and I were busy with the water bowser, the Baron's forces attacked the Aurora. Even having repelled the Baron's attack, we were still stuck in the desert without fuel. So while the others were preparing the Aurora for departure, Gyul, Demir and I were to sneak into the oil terminal and steal a railway, railway tank full of fuel. We were intending to open the gate from the inside, hook the tank up to the rail car, and roll it out before any of the Baron's men noticed anything. Getting to the train proved tricky. That to the tank proved tricky, as the oil terminal was teeming with slaves and their overseers. Still, I managed to car but carry the very first... What the, God. The first part of the plan out without bloodshed. The second part of the plan went south, though. We ended up trapped, and the Baron decided to be magnanimous. Magnanimous, offering that we become his vassals. His plan didn't work. While we were drawing the attention, Gyul bomb or his attention, Gyul bombed his for fortress, and Anna is that punctuated his career. So wherever we go, we keep finding the same tyrants, f fanatics, cannibals, rapists, murdering each other enthusiastically, or having gained power, oppressing everybody else ruthlessly. Is war to be blamed for this, or did it just free them from the constraints of civilization? Did we become monsters, or were we always like this? I had hoped we'd become people again on the surface, but that hope veins with every day. So then again, anywhere we went, we also met real people. Selfless. Brave. 
uh, humane, people who could have led others to peace and freedom. People like Ewell, people like us, and the common folk. It's not their fault, they just lack the courage to fight the oppressors. Still, we did all we could to free the people of this sun-scorched desert, and Ewell won't let them forget this example. It is a pity we can't stay, a shame that Demir... A shame that Demir's... That Demir's? That Demir couldn't find any trace of his relatives, but his family, his real home, is here on the Aurora. Yeah, summer! Okay, so this is the uh, this is what Artyom just read, so I don't need to read that. Crew! Colonel Miller. Wait, what? Okay. Oh no. Oh, is it just on about the Yamantau bunker? Holy shit! Each one of these keeps getting it more information. I don't care, I only want to read new entries, which will probably be Gule. Tokarev, Katya, Nas Nastya, Crest. What? Oh! I thought it would have added Gule. Well, we have cannibals. The cannibals residing in the Yamantau complex seem to suffer from heavy cerebral damage caused by an infectious disease they contracted through their diet. So their words are barely legible. Still, they are exceptionally determined in pursuing their prey in complete disregard. With complete disregard of their own safety, makes them a dangerous enemy indeed. Tribals! The local population of the Caspian Desert, ruthlessly subjugated by a tyrannical criminal empire. The tribals are mostly young and serve their masses willingly. Remain servile and dedicated to them no matter what terrible oppression they are repaid for their service with. All tribals are devout followers of the cult of the Holy Flame. So, instituted by the Baron, their adherence to the tenets of faith being brutally enforced by their masses to keep them under control. I have no idea what that is. Is that Svarog oil? The criminal empire ruling the portion of, of Caspian Desert we visited was controlled by a supreme ruler called the Baron. Using the largest oil rig in the area as his seat of power, apparently the Baron's climb to power started within uh, Svarog Oil, an oil drilling company that had been controlling all of the all of the oil extraction in the area when the war broke out. Creatures, dog, pretty sure, spider, spider bug. East dwellers have abandoned tunnels and other dark places of which there's no shortage in our world, are extremely aggressive, agile, strong, and well-armoured, making them tough opponents. When you consider their tendency to live and hunt in packs, they become veritable nightmares, or nightmare fuel. Their only real weakness, although a tremendous one, is light. Even a mere flashlight can make them thrash about in panic and die in seconds. Spiderbug female! These fellas have abandoned tunnels and- okay, so... Their only real weakness- oh uh, wait, so what's this different- what's different with this one? Uh, the females of the species tend to be armoured even better than their male counterparts, but prefer to stay at a certain distance fr from their prey, at least until they disable it with wads of web they shoot with amazing power and accuracy. And the lurkers. Okay, weapons. The Tiha. God. Is there anything new? The Valve, probably. Gatling. Bulldog. Oh yeah. The Bulldog didn't really have a chance to make it to make a name for itself in the numerous wars mankind was so fond of waging. Before the apocalypse, the weapon's creator creators intended it to replace its ancestor, the venerable Kalash, yet mankind was able to neatly wrap its history up without the newcomer's involvement, so the bulldog started reaping its share of lives only after the end of the world. I have to give the bulldog's designers credit, it is vastly superior to, to the Kalash. In damage output, handling accuracy, has a lower rate of fire, making bursts more controllable, and is much lighter to, to boot. Yet, despite all despite all that, you don't really see these weapons often. The Bulldog is much more complex than the Kalash, and requires skillful maintenance. It's hardly surprising that most of the survivors prefer the Elder Brother, the indestructible Kalash. Of course. Okay, do everything. There was probably more shit I could have read to do with, like, Colonel Miller and all the more character development for certain characters, but I don't care. Are you- are they drunk? Like, really drunk? Oh, here's the thing. Oh, I didn't- wait a minute. It did get rid of- 
my parts, but not all of it. Yeah, I've just... I have 300 and 200, whereas before I had like 700 and 500. Oh, and of course. Really? Um... Sure. There we go. Perfect. It's fine. Scrap's incredibly easy to come by. I do have the same weapons, don't I? Just a double, double jack. Okay, yeah, I do. Good. Just gonna say, if they got rid of those, I'd have been pissed. Oh, there's the Gatling gun. Wait, they're all here. Yeah, so I could just switch. No. Jealous. 